Welcome to another wonderful edition of the Million Dollar Peddlers. I'm Paper Guy, and we've changed the backing here for you. I gave you a bit of a uh, Japanese motif. Um, today we're going to talk about hidden value within deals. And there's a couple of different ways I can take this, and I've done some thinking about it, and I'm actually going to take it every which way. Um, first, I'm going to give you a little bit of a tip. And a good way to get hidden value in deals is do not go through everything when you're buying something in bulk. And I know that's counterintuitive, and I know that that's not what a lot of people tell you to do. But generally, if you can get a big enough deal for enough stuff, once you've started to go through it and you realize that you've gotten your money back out of just what you've seen, stop looking. And I'm going to tell you why. Um, say somebody's got 10 boxes worth of, of books, magazines, whatever is to sell you, and they tell you they want $100. And you grab the first box, you start going through it, and about a third of the way through the box, you see a $50 magazine. And you keep going through it, and you find another $50 magazine. Right there, you're out of the deal. I understand you have other expenses, all that sort of stuff. But you're out of the deal right there uh, alone. Two magazines in the first box. You grab the next box, you start looking through it, and you're noticing that, hey, this is all kind of the stuff right around the same era. It's all kind of the same stuff and you find a third very good magazine in there. Grab the other eight boxes, take the tops off them, take a quick look through just to make sure that there's stuff in there. But when I say a quick look through, literally take the top off and go, yep, that's in there. Why would, why would you want to do this? Um, basically because whoever's selling it to you is probably there watching. Um, and you certainly don't want to be going through and have your eyes go wide and go, whoa, anything like that. Uh, because you do that a couple of times and suddenly they're raising the price. And you don't necessarily want them seeing what it is they're selling you, which again sounds counterintuitive. But they bought it probably in a bulk lot and they're probably moving it to you in a bulk lot. And they did pretty much the same thing when they bought it. And they said, hey, you know, look, I paid 50 bucks for these. I know they will give me $100 for them. So they're flipping it to you. They don't know what's in there either. The last thing you want to do is give them the opportunity to see what they're selling you because they might start pulling stuff back or they might start raising their price or they may say oh i don't know that was in there i'm going to keep that for myself so again as soon as you establish that it's a good deal stop looking um, no reason to keep going you've already known you've gotten a good deal you can go through it at home you can sort it out at home you don't do that there in front of the guy um, Another area that I could take it to, which, which I'll talk about very quickly, is a lot of times there's hidden value. Take a book, for example. You buy a big box of books, you'd be surprised if they're older, how often there's stuff in the books. Uh, whether it's a trade card, whether it's a bookmark, um, just various things. Throughout the years, I've actually found things like that in the books that have sold more than the books themselves have. So sometimes there's hidden value hidden there. Uh, or another area where there's hidden value at are sports programs, things like that, um, playbills, things like that. You'd be surprised how often you end up finding one of those that's signed, especially if it's some kind of a program to some sort of like a local charitable event or something rather like that, you know, where the people paid, they were there around the stars, and guess what? They ended up getting a couple of autographs from the stars. Um, I've amassed a nice little autograph collection, uh, you know, James Garner, uh, Sir Alec Guinness, a few other people like that, just in things that I found in lots that were signed. Um, cannot argue with that whatsoever. So you never know on that kind of thing. The person selling it to you may just see, you know, I've got 100 playbills. And you start looking through and you see one or two that are signed, he doesn't know they're signed. So that's, that's great hidden value right there. Um, another thing there with the playbills, is a lot of times if you go through them you'll actually find little flyers little ads for other plays um, they were passed out at the time of the show to you know to advertise upcoming shows and all that kind of stuff and believe it or not sometimes the flops are the ones that are worth some good money and i've had cases before where i've you know bought a couple of playbills whatnot and, and in between the pages was was a flyer and i remember one flyer and i do not remember what the play was and nobody else does either which is why it was a flop but I got $50 out of something that was just in between the pages of a playbill um, and again it was a play nobody had ever heard of it it opened on Broadway and closed on Broadway in one week um, one thing that you want to do if you if you have that is when you're researching it if it's a difficult play to find and you figure out that it, it was only on Broadway for a week or two 
uh, list flop uh, right there in the title when you're listing because there are people that, that collect off of that or search off of that. But where I really was want to take this uh, episode is to talk to you about the hidden value in boxes and bags and things like that. And I, I wrote down a couple of deals here that I'm just going to go over real quick. For instance, there was a deal that uh, Mr. Magazine bought a few years ago. He ended up buying 50000 give or take, uh, magazines. And he paid somewhere around seventy-five dollars to $100,000 on it. I, I don't recall exactly what the numbers are on it, but something or other like that. But everything was boxed and everything was bagged. Um, and it, it just running through just the cost of the boxes. The boxes, magazine boxes, run you eh, around $5 each. You can buy them cheaper if you buy a lot of them. Um, but they're about $5 a piece. And in order for there to be 50,000 magazines, you're talking about $2,500 worth of boxes. Uh, you're also talking about $2,300 $2, worth of magazine bags. Um, you know, buying them retail. Obviously, you can get them wholesale a little bit cheaper, but you're still talking about almost $5,000 worth of value right there. Um, and, and you're paying, you know, seventy-five dollars to $100,000 for the whole collection. But you take down the price of, your, price of each item just by that alone. And the other nice thing about that is they stay safe when you have them stored. And then when they sell, they're already bagged, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, another area, and, and I actually specifically remembered the deal, you know, comic boxes. A uh, gentleman had, oh, I don't know, it wasn't quite a full box. A full box holds around 300. It was a couple of hundred, 200 or so comic books in a, in a box. Every one of them was bagged and boarded. Um, and it came in a comic box. Uh, 300 bags and boards run you $51. I, I said I just priced it up before then. So you're talking 200 of them. You're talking $34 worth of value right there. And then the comic box is another 5 to $7. We'll call it $6. So I got $40 worth of value in comic bags, backers, and the box. Um, for the 200 comic books, I paid the guy $25. He just wanted to get rid of them. He was happy to sell them to me for $25. So basically, I could have gone home, thrown out every comic book, and still been $15 ahead. And obviously, I didn't do that. Um, there were some you know, better comics in there. You know, nothing great, but you know, it was $10, $15, $20 comics in there right there. And that's where hidden value is. A lot of people don't think about that. But when you're looking around at the deal, even something so small as, what kind of boxes are they giving me to take the stuff home in? Oh, they're giving me banana boxes. Okay, those don't have a lot of value. Oh, they're giving me four, five, six boxes that I can sit there and I can reuse and ship things out in. Hey, those boxes are 50 cents to a dollar a piece. You know, and you start adding that stuff up in a deal and hey, half of these are already bagged all that kind of thing. That's a lot of hidden value and nobody puts any value into it when they're selling it to you. So that's where you can kind of get a bit of an edge on a deal with, without anybody caring really. You know, the person who's flipping it to you probably bought it bagged and boarded as it was. Um, you know, maybe maybe the gentleman bought the whole box of comics for 50 bucks, took out a bunch of stuff he wanted and then just sold me the rest and figured, hey, I got half my money back out of it, never thinking about it. You know, and I, I don't know why. I just know I had a great deal, and I know just in supplies alone it was well worth it. So when you're getting into a deal, like I said, you're going to find some hidden value in there. Um, and even some books, some local books, are a great place to find signatures as well. Not that they hold a lot more value. A lot of times uh, the books were $10 and the signed copies were $12 to $15. But even if it's only still worth the $10, it's going to sell a little bit quicker because people do want it signed. Um, local books tend to be that way. Uh, poetry books are, are areas where a lot of items are signed at. And sometimes they sell books in the bookstores that have a little sticker on the front that says autographed copy. If you're going through the books that somebody's trying to sell you and you see a couple of them that have the autographed copy, hey, you know, they're signed right there. And, you know, he's saying, oh, give me a buck a piece on these books. you got to take them all, though. And you're going through seeing three, four, five that are signed. He may not even have noticed it. He may not even care. He may not think there's any extra value in it. But they're definitely going to sell for a little more because they're autographed. So whenever you're doing a deal, look for that, that hidden value. It'll make you feel better about the deal. It'll let you close the deal a little better. And you'll end up, you'll end up way ahead in the long run if you can get a little bit of hidden value out of every deal that you do. Thank you. Stay safe.
Mm-hmm.